In August of 2000, Michael Shaw purchased a property on the I-580 frontage road in Castro Valley, Alameda County, California. The property had been left a chronic eyesore, but it included a conditional use permit for building a self-storage facility. Michael, knowing settled property law in California, was confident that building a storage business here would be no problem. But, due to the unlawful actions by Alameda County and its planning department that would unfold, this was not to be true. For more than 10 years, the Alameda Planning Department, in conjunction with various local boards and NGOs, interfered and impeded Michael Shaw's rightful ability to develop and run his business, Lockaway Storage. This required years of expensive litigation, construction delays, and loss of revenue. In 2011, due to instigation by members of the Castro Valley Municipal Advisory Council, the Alameda Board of Supervisors threatened to deny renewal of Michael's conditional use permit without which his business would be closed. Michael was granted three minutes response time at the board planning meeting. October 2011, 11 years after the land was purchased. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. afternoon. I would request additional time. I've been involved in this for 10 years at extraordinary cost, decimation of a business, loss of employment, all kinds of things because of the amount of time and effort and money required in order to keep Alameda County within a legal boundary. The efforts uh, undertaken, beginning, beginning with uh, Mr. Miley's uh, comment to our staff in the year 2003 that he would rather be sued by Lockaway Storage than sued by the Sierra Club, gives way to the, prom the problem that exists here. The problem is that individual rights are taking a back seat to the collective. May I have some additional time? Let's, let's just see how you do, sir. I normally don't grant it, so don't be surprised if I don't. Let me report back to the chairman of this board of the eight-year journey that Lockaway Storage has been subjected to. It has been nine years of continual harassment from many divisions here in, in Alameda County. The court decision which cost this county's taxpayers $2.7 million because they'd rather be sued by us than, Alabi, than, than the Sierra Club, ought to be less than enough. The harassment is continuing today. There must be a reason for that harassment. I will skip on the subject of the litigation, but I will point out that county council's office was reprimanded by the court Sanctions were levied against your county council's office for beguiling the court and failing to follow its orders when permits were issued. The result of that was that our construction was further delayed. We filed an action. Superior Court denied, um, uh, 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 asserted that the council had absolute immunity. We took that, court, that, that issue to the appellate courts. Whereupon the county had to, after the filing of an opening brief, pay us a half million dollars of additional money for the, for the county council's wrongful behavior in this case. And that typifies the kinds of infor, uh, action that has been taken against us all along. The case proceeded to, to uh, two bench trials, one to determine liability, which happened in 2009, I think, and then, and then the damages were assessed in, in a separate trial in 2010. Now the county attacks my management authority and continues the harassment that we have endured for nine years already. I will agree to abide to what the BZA approved. The terms of the second round staff report will not be agreed to by me. Recognize, please, Mr. Miley, that I have established and vested rights to the operation of Lockaway Storage Castor Valley. The important comments that I need to make, these, not that these weren't, are still to come. I request your permission. I'm going to give you about 45 more seconds. Well, I can't. I cannot address the, the consequences of the county's establishment of a contractual relationship in violation of Article 1, Section 10 of the U.S. Constitution with the organization called ICLE. I, sir, I give people a certain amount of time. I have to be fair to everybody. I can't well, treat you any different. Ten, ten like years, ten years and, and, and millions of dollars of cost to the taxpayer ought to be able to be 
explain to the taxpayer what it is that drives this county to its irrational land use decisions, including the one that we've experienced in the continued harassment. I am a leader across the country in the Expose ICLE campaign. 25 cities or so have thrown ICLE out of their community, understanding that it violates Article 1, Section 10, and therefore, if not today, I will proceed to provide you the misprision of treason required under California statute to alert you to your to your violation of the oath of office Thank you, to sir. defend and protect the United States of America. But the Board of Supervisors continued this planning item until January 2012. This is what Supervisor Nate Miley had to say before the statement we saw Michael Shaw make. Well, I'd like to see if we could continue this because I'd like staff to um, study uh, this matter a little further because I have some additional issues I'd like to raise with, with staff around this and I don't think you'll be able to respond to the, my concerns today. What exactly were the additional concerns that Supervisor Miley had in mind to raise with staff in calling for this continuance? What was the property when you purchased it and the, uh, the state of the permitting for it? Well, the property had been um, used as the construction loading site for the building of the, I don't know, 10 or 12 lane uh, interstate freeway that fronts the property. And so it was all filled with construction fill dirt and uh, it had been turned in since the freeway had been built and part of the time we um, acquired the property into two quasi-public uses. Uh, one was that it was a motocross training ground. You know, people would just use that land uh, for their motorcycles to go up and down the big dirt piles that had been left there from the freeway construction. It was filled with weeds off, off those trails of, uh, of, of motorcyclists and then there were massive humps and holes that were filled with uh, garbage and refuge that, that uh, people had just taken up there and, and offloaded. So the condition of the site was hardly <laughs> this dynamic that they um, the Green Movement in Alameda likes to refer to as the scenic corridor, that is the weed-lined um, uh, uh, pathway uh, along the 580 freeway. Um, th th this property in particular was quite abused and, and, um, and sore, and so um, our, our, our development um, naturally uh, was intended to uh, clean all that out and, and put a productive use on the land. So one of the really crucial aspects of the attack against your property by Alameda is due to Measure D. Uh, when was Measure D passed and how long was that after you purchased your property? Well, we purchased the property in August of 2008. It was passed in December of 2008. Um, but it had, it, was, it had provisions that recognized that it could not upset uh, existing circumstances. And this parcel had had what's called a conditional use permit which had been granted decades before and continually renewed uh, and was in effect in, in uh, December 2000 uh, which which was exempted under the Measure D proposal um, as it was adopted. I mean Measure D is the ultimate wildlands taking program in the United States. It's being copied by counties around the state and, and around the country and it is, it is has been a leading advocate for the, the collectivization of, of real property. That's what Measure D does, but by its own terms it exempted um, projects that had planning approvals that uh, already had existed uh, on this property. And Measure D wasn't exactly a, a local measure, was it? Uh, in fact, uh, one of the Alameda supervisors, Scott Haggerty, has actually stated that he really wasn't in favor of Measure D, but he got told that Measure D was to pass by whom? Well, I think I've, I've heard him in public forums say that Jerry Brown told him that uh, this had to pass. Of course, Brown is a, a big advocate of the sustainable development movement, the, the globalist land use movement that seeks to abolish private property piece by piece. But, but Haggerty is, uh, it seems uh, to be a man conditioned to say whatever he needs to say in order to keep the public um, eye on himself and, and, and the public power position that he's amassed over this decade plus in Alameda County. Here's Scott Haggerty expertly manipulating his constituents. 
Sorry, I've been wanting to do this all night. A couple months ago, I broke my heel, and uh, sometimes it starts hurting. But I, you know, can you hear me without this? Yeah. Okay. Mark said a lot, and usually after Mark speaks, it's kind of the reason I'm his vice chair on the ACTC. There's not a lot left for me, but you know, if you ask me what I heard the most tonight, I heard frustration, and that's why at at 8:50 when we were supposed to be out of here 45 minutes ago, I said, as I was being accused of not listening, which I was, um, I was, I was telling staff, we need to stay. And, and I was willing to stay till 11 if we had to. Now, I'm not encouraging you to go call your buddies right now. <laughs> but, but I think there's a lot of, what you, I am so happy, you don't understand. I'm happy you people are here. I really am. We're your friends tonight. We're here to listen to you. We're here to digest what you say and take it back and when we vote, understand what it is our constituents are saying. We need to, you know what, no. We need to drop the anger. You need to communicate via email. You need to come to these and not interrupt but say, my God, this is wrong. You're doing, you're taking people's property. And I think that's why the emotion was so strong this evening. Are we, this are we debating? Well, no, no. Do you hear that, that some guy thinks I'm a big fat jerk because, <laughs> you know, here I am and I'm the root of all evil. That's what I'm getting at, but, a redist but, the redistricting map. That's the gist all, of my story. Because we stayed, ever. you focused your anger towards us. No, you we, took it out on us. Well, then we apologize. Then that's sure. okay. I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. I'm going to go home and take it off. But I just wanted to say... <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what I look. To say I just... The bottom line... Look, we're taking it out really on the ma'am, please. But see, you're doing exactly what I'm saying doesn't work. Because I didn't hear anything you just said. Mm -hmm. And if you would have let me finish, okay, and then I would have given you a few minutes, we would have both heard each other. So that's what I'm saying. It's okay to come with signs and hold them up. It's okay to speak your mind here. But do it in a respectful way. And you know what? Believe me, we talked about this at the commission meeting today. And they said, oh, Dublin's next. <laughs> and I said, Dublin's different. We're going to do this different. Well, I don't know that it was different. But the meeting itself, no, I'm talking about the way it was going to go down. Um, but the meeting itself, in my opinion, was different. Yes, it was. Okay? Please, listen to what I'm saying. If you really want to be heard, do it here. Hold your signs. Send your emails. By God, call your state assembly person in your Senate. Why you're letting them off the hook, I have absolutely no idea. And the governor for the Measure D person was the one that called people in Livermore and said, vote for Measure D. <coughs> Janet, are you here? Good. <laughs> so, let, let, let's try this. If you do show up at the next meeting, let's try it a little different. And I will, com com I, will, I will convey to my colleagues that you, the public, really want your elected officials to stay for the whole meeting. Yeah. Okay? But let's look again at how Haggerty was when asked for more time by a constituent. Let's, let's just see how you do, sir. I normally don't grant it, so don't be surprised if I don't. And here he shows his concern for the photographic evidence of the improvements in the landscaping at Lockaway Storage but an unsightly dump before Lockaway initiated its, its uh, project. So if we want to talk about aesthetics, take a look at the garbage that was dumped there eight or nine years ago. Now take a look at the project as it exists now. Substantial amount of the berm is green. The ground cover is working. The water so when did you find out that you were going to have problems with the Measure D provisions? Well, we found that out in uh, the spring spring of spring or summer of 2002 and uh, we, in the interim we had processed the development plans uh, at an exorbitant cost. Um, we were moving along, um, the county was as usual uh, reacting rather slowly but we were processing it and we're on schedule to just about complete that process by the summer of 2002. Um, and then in, in the spring they just stopped. And then they told us we had till September 22nd before our use condition um, uh, 
passed by. In other words, it, it came to, a, to, to its own death at that time. And so the, the county began delaying things and saying that we were subject to Major D, and September 22nd came along and they said, oh, you lost your development uh, timetable, and so your land now has to be kept essentially in open space. So then you took them to court? That we did. And the upshot of that was that you got a ruling from the uh, Superior Court that they had to issue the use permit. Well, we had lots of rulings, all in our favor, but one um, it, through this, you know, what became an eight-year, nine-year litigation process just for trial court. And uh, um, in, in that process, we got rulings against county council for misleading the court and playing, uh, you know, playing dirty. And uh, we got uh, a ruling that, in fact, our land had been um, confiscated for a period of time. We got rulings before that that the county had to issue a building permit to us. And then we got a ruling for damages against the county for the, for, for the cost that, uh, that uh, we incurred as a result of their confiscatory action. And the confiscatory action was the effort to apply Measure D to us when, when the language of Measure D plainly exempted us. And uh, so, so it became a, a government theft, a condemnation of our use for some period of time, which um, rapidly, uh, that time frame, construction costs went way up. You know, we had lost income, we had uh, attorney fees, we had uh, all, all kinds of consequences that befell us as a consequence of that. And, uh, and the court determined those damages, and, um, and that's what the trial litigation um, ultimately was all about. Well, before you got your final uh, ruling against the county on that, they did require, when did they rule that you had to have your building permit issued? Well, the court ruled, I think, in 2005. And, and uh, so subsequent to that, did the permit issue? Well, it, it did not, because county council went to the planning department and told them not to issue the permit. That the county council had more plans for lack of waste storage. Uh, before such would be allowed to happen. So the planning department didn't, and uh, by the time the court sanctioned county council for that uh, wrongful uh, activity, um, you know, we lost another building season, you know, got into the rain season, so we had to wait another year, which just extended our, our damages uh, that much further. Do you think it's speculate that somebody was putting pressure on county council for them to make that unlawful uh, request of the planning department? Well, you know, it's tough to know what county council does. They, they, they make themselves exempt from any kind of um, uh, awareness of, of what their actions might be. And so uh, what one can only speculate, but uh, certainly the actions of county council were exactly paralleled to the drives and motivations of the um, globalist Agenda 21 movement. And, of course, the key entity across the United States for purposes of internationalizing our local land use policy is an organization called ICLE, the International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives. It is headquartered here in Oakland, uh, just a couple of blocks from, uh, you know, from where, where the Board of Supervisors uh, meet. And um, uh, it, it's, it's clear to me, uh, ICLE is an official, um, uh, Alameda County and Oakland both are members of the ICLE organization and uh, their policies uh, reflect that, and so I'm certain that there's a coordination between County Council of Alameda and the ICLE organization. The county ruled that the county had been abusive toward you in this process of delaying your building permit and your conditional use permit, so did the County of Alameda finally just let it go at that? Well, no, the county now has filed an appeal um, of this ruling, and they've spent, uh, the, you know, the, half their argument in their opening brief to the appellate court is about um, why it is they didn't appeal the, go the, uh, the um, trial court's mandate to issue us a building permit. 
and they stayed in there somewhere along the lines that they were afraid that they would be, be um, chastised by the trial court if they did that. Of course, that's a, a ludicrous argument. The statute of limitations is run. But the reason they would like to maybe soften up the trial court to, to, to issue such a, such a preposterous ruling, that is, that a seven-year-old mandate issued by a trial court could be reversed by an appellate court uh, after a building has been built so that the county can turn around and tell me to tear my building down. Well, there's no basis for an appeal on that uh, in, in the first instance, and secondly, it's been voided, and you know, it, it's, it's just really an effort to use taxpayer money to harass a landowner uh, to the point where perhaps they think they can drive me off by just breaking my back. Um, the appeal, in my judgment, is rather preposterous. Uh, they, they also asked the court to negate, you know, the, the only viable measurement for um, uh, any judgment against government for regulatorily taking someone's property. And so the, the, the county is asking the appellate court to overrule decades and legions of the United States Supreme Court jurisprudence by basically create a condition, creating a condition in California where no one could ever claim an inverse taking, that is a regulatory taking, of one's use and enjoyment of property by government. One of the Alex supervisors, Nate Miley, has an organization in Castro Valley which is very closely associated with him, which is the Castro Valley Municipal Advisory Council. So what has the role of this MAC been in your process? Well, you know, we, what we've experienced in America is just a massive Sovietization of our governmental process. The MAC is a perfect a, a, a incident to that. This is a, an advisory committee to these um, elected and appointed boards. Um, and the advisory committee um, takes uh, issues that are ultimately heard by um, either a zoning administrative board or the board of supervisors and does a preliminary hearing. Well, the MAC committee um, was the first reviewer of the extension of our conditional use permit. Uh, Alameda County is the only place I've done self storages in 30 communities around the West. And when you have a use permit, it runs with the property. Well, in Alameda County, they want to check on your use permit every so many years so they can drag you, if you're a political enemy, into these boards and, and have them just m make you into mincemeat. And so we began with this process by uh, a hearing at the Municipal Advisory Board for Castro Valley. Uh, and they took part our representative claiming that the property was an eyesore and they clearly had no... Um, no idea, no, no real understanding of the, even the ecology along the 680 corridor. It's all com complete with Spanish oats, a weed that no native insect, no native animal cares about, likes. It's very flammable. It's, it's a monoculture over these hills. And they were complaining about the landscaping on our project, which was uh, mandated by the county so that a big berm, a big, a big dirt bank can be braced up against our building so that the building can't be seen. Well, the conditions for building that berm was that we had to use chop rock. Plants don't grow very well in chop rock, but I'll argue that the landscaping out in front of our project is more, nat more native, i.e. more natural, and more, more pleasant looking at than the weeds that are growing over the rest of this so-called scenic corridor. But someone on this MAC committee had it in for Lockaway. Well, again, I think this Ickley organization is quite bothered that first we built in the scenic corridor, and second, that we're outing the, the nature of their international connection all across the country. And so the MAC board concluded that this SOAR needed to be, I don't know, torn down. I couldn't tell. So anyway, then we went to the Board of Zoning Adjustments and Board of Zoning Adjustments just quickly and calmly said conditional use permit extended for another 10 years. And then three of the people from the MAC board decided they would appeal the appellate decision, if you will, to the chiefs at the Board of Supervisors. And so they then undertook under their own capacity to seek 
a review of the overruling of their holding. Well, these people, I think, are pretty powerful insiders in Alameda County. They're all part of this green committee. And so they were able to um, entice the Board of Supervisors to hear their appeal of the reversal of their decision to the Board of Supervisors. That'd be like a trial judge appealing an appellate court's ruling to a Supreme Court. So now we've got what was set up for November. This is Mark Crawford of the Castro Valley MAC at Michael Shaw's first hearing. Uh, well, after all that, that's a lot of drama that really doesn't have anything to do with us. Uh, we didn't even know about the lawsuit until um, long after you know the actions that, that we had taken and actions that we're taking as, as uh, private citizens, not as MAC members. Um, so we don't really have anything to do with all that. We're just here for the appeal uh, for the landscape issue on Lockaway. And we just, we're, we're trying to have this applicant, uh, you know, the same rules apply to him that apply to everybody else. It's really that simple. So with that, uh, that's all we have to say at this time. Thank you. Okay, thank you Dave Sadoff of the MAC at Michael Shaw's second hearing. Mr. Sandoff. Greetings, supervisors. I support staff's recommendations. I'd like to also em emphasize that due to this applicant's poor adherence to reasonable previous conditions of approval, it is an imperative that the Board of Supervisors mandate a 90-day landscaping installation time frame, implement a subsequent one-year evaluation of that installation, and provide for a maximum 60-day correction period for any deficiencies identified during the one-year review. In addition, a mandatory five-year review of this conditional use permit should be conducted to ensure compliance. Thank you. That was uh, Cheryl Moraglia, Mark Crawford, and Dave Sadoff from the MAC, and those are the people that we actually see in the planning hearings there who are there absolutely opposed to you even getting a, a conditional use permit. Well, they, they are driven by, by something that seems very bizarre. I mean, I know, I know one of them has a catering business, and can you imagine if I came after her catering business in an effort to just shut it down and, and did it on a, on a basis that's just totally absurd and that is consistent with the goals perceived of um, those operating in Alameda County who seek, who seek Alameda County as an outpost of a global order and are very open about their commitment to internationalist programs like sustainable development. In a situation, a situation where they finally decided, at least at their planning committee level, the, uh, the supervisors have decided to issue you your conditional use permit for another five years. I mean, they, they're trying to talk about whether they should make you come back in three years or not, but now they've given you five years. But in the meantime, they still have this appeal going in court, which could result in your business being completely shut down and destroyed. Oh, I don't think there's any chance of that. If, if that happened, then, uh, then I think um, uh, America's noticed that, that even the last shreds of the idea of, of individual liberty and private property and and uh, you know, life, etc., um, being one's own, uh, will will have been abrogated, and and this country will be in free fall. And I don't predict that will be the case because there's still enough Americans who understand America that uh, they can't get away with doing it quite that suddenly. This is the beginning of the misprision of treason that Michael Shaw gave to the Alameda Board of Supervisors in between the planning hearings for Lockaway Storage in October 2011 and January 2012. Perhaps this explains the following performance by Supervisor Nate Miley, overseer of the Castro Valley MAC, at the second hearing. Then unless triggered by deficiencies of the applicant prior a mandatory review of the permit of five years. So uh, 
So we can set the conditional use permit up to five years or five years to ten years, but the minimum at this point in time in terms of our practices is five years. So we would be comfortable with five years? Well, I think there's sort of three things to consider. One is the original rezoning, which states three to five years. There's what the East BZA gave the applicant, which is ten years, and then there's what the MAC is appealing, which is five years. Given their concern about a berm, a shorter period could be considered, and I think it would be reasonable because there has been a concern about the failed plantings. So that shorter period of five years you think is reasonable based on the failure of the berm and the plantings needed to take? Well, I think that even a shorter review period to look at that specifically would be considered. I would consider that to be very reasonable. I mean, there's been a history of these plantings failing, so I'd like to see something maybe even shorter, you know, two to three years to just make sure that that is no longer an issue. Once that's been addressed, and I think a longer period would be more, would be appropriate. I thought, but I thought I heard earlier that staff was recommending the five years. Now are you saying two to three years? Because I want to make sure we're clear, and then I want to make sure we're clear on the rationale behind that. Yeah. Well, actually, the staff recommendation is to stick with the East BZA tenure, but in response to your question, I think that there's, you know, there's different time frames that are being proposed, and given our concern and the concern expressed today about the failed plantings, you know, a shorter review period, as mentioned in the original rezoning, might be something that you might want to consider. Okay. And that shorter period should be? I certainly think if we look at the whole array of where we are currently in the world of CUPs in Alameda County, you see a range, I think, typically going from maybe three years on the short end up to ten years. And I think certainly five years, you find yourself squarely in the middle there. I personally feel that that gives us enough check-in ability, but I also, I understand, you know, the idea of going in, I think Albert's talking about a very specific, precise issue and honing in on that, perhaps for a shorter time frame, but not looking at the entirety of the permit. I think that is perhaps an option as well, and I'm not sure if Albert was saying that, but I could certainly put that as an option for you. What would the county council recommend? Yeah, I would join staff's comments. Three years is about the shortest we do at this point. I think five years, as Chris Baser indicated, is about in the middle, so I would recommend a standard provision such as five years. All right, so Condition 7, based on that rationale, five years, recognizing that three to ten is the range, but based on the rationale of what we've heard from staff, five years I think would be an appropriate finding. Now, and then with the condition number, what we're describing as number eight at this point in time, the harassment that I have received in my operation of lockaway storage is indicative of policies that call for the abolition of private property. This objective is a cornerstone of Agenda 21's Sustainable Development Blueprint, which has been adopted by Alameda County through its membership in ICLEI, the International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives. This is an international NGO formed for the purpose of localizing the UN's agenda for the 21st century. You all have a sheet here that identifies the members of ICLEI, and you'll see number two on that list is Alameda County. Here is the UN's Earth Summit Agenda 21, the UN's Program of Action, and here's the planning guide, the local agenda planning guide. The copy of the cover is in your packet. This is an introduction to sustainable development planning. This has been prepared by the ICLEI organization. The purpose today is to follow up on my delivery to each of you of a misprision of treason 
purpose of a misprision is to provide you information necessary for, an, for a reasonable person to know that their actions have been treasonous. My primary purpose today is to help you understand why and how your commitment to the ICLEI organization violates Article I, Section 10 of the U.S. Constitution. This section provides that no state or its subdivisions can enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation with a foreign political entity. There is no statute of limitations associated with the violation of this section. ICLEI's North American headquarters is located just blocks from here. The world headquarters are in Bonn, Germany. ICLEI uses climate change and biodiversity as the excuse for an attack on private property and more. <coughs> Many municipalities around the country have terminated their contracts with ICLEI as people are becoming aware of the philosophical underpinnings of the ICLEI organization. As Mr. Haggerty knows, ICLEI also plays a gigantic role within the local regional cog known as ABAG. ABAG, recently led by Mr. Haggerty, has hatched the One Bay Area plan. Your constituency needs to understand that One Bay Area is the local version designed to herd people into dense stack and pack communities surrounded by empty space that was once private property. Measure D, the subject of my company's lawsuit, denies rural landowners the natural or unalienable right to the use and enjoyment of property. This type of legislation is the cornerstone upon which Agenda 21 is predicated. The public is coming to understand this. I have previously delivered my organization's Freedom Advocates core pamphlet, Understanding Sustainable Development Agenda 21. I request a little more time so I can get to landscaping issues. I haven't stopped. Well, you're going to get about 30 seconds. This information has been given to you to help meet the information required by the Ms. Prisian statute. If you believe you can defend your county's relationship with ICLEI against charges of treason, I offer the opportunity to publicly, debate, to publicly debate the issue. Your constituency deserves nothing else. several hearings, uh, you know, the uh, county, county supervisors had to acknowledge that uh, our landscaping looks pretty good given the conditions out here. 